Hi, this is Dr. Centeno, and today we're going to talk about an interesting topic, which is um, what happens in patients that don't respond to the PICL procedure? Do they still get improvements in instability? So when I first began the PICL procedure, I would use before and after DMX studies to make sure that we were improving uh, instability. And since about seven in 10 patients were responding, uh, that was great. You know, we saw some nice reliable decreases in instability. Now, once we got the initial proof of concept, looking at about 15 of these, and we were seeing nice improvements in instability or decreases in things like DMX overhang, said to my, I said to myself, there's no reason to continue to do these studies, primarily because of the x-ray exposure issue uh, as a doctor, it's my job to keep patient, patients as safe as I possibly can. And if we were exposing them to uh, x-ray radiation just to satisfy our own curiosity without actually moving the needle for the patient in some way, then that's not appropriate. So we stopped doing routine before and after DMX studies. And at that point, uh, the only time these studies were ordered was primarily here, and that was if the patient had a first DMX uh, and then they had their first uh, PICL, and we didn't really see much symptomatic improvement, I would want to check a second DMX after the first PICL procedure to see if there was some objective improvement in instability to see if we should move forward with the second PICL procedure. And there were other reasons as well where, where these were sometimes done, but that was the primary reason these studies were done. So the question then becomes, if the procedure produces reliable objective decreases in instability in those who have symptomatic relief, and that's about 70% of our patients or so. What's happening in those who don't have symptomatic relief? And that's about 30% of our patients or so, give or take. So does this group have any change in their DMX? So I did a little case review here. This was not too hard to do. Uh, I looked at patients who I know were a little symptomatic relief, where we were getting that second uh, DMX to see if we should proceed to a second procedure. So the first procedure didn't really move the needle for them symptomatically. These were my patients. The DMX was performed. So again, no little symptomatic relief. My patients, DMX was performed by the CATS office because I had all of those uh, in an easy to look at file, and I know that those DMXs were done well. The patient started out with abnormal overhang or ADI before the procedure, meaning at the end of the day, they had instability on DMX to start, and that we had done a comparison in the last 12 months. So again, patients who didn't respond symptomatically to the first PICL What's going on in those patients? Are we moving the needle on their instability or not? So these are the cases that I found that fit that criteria. So what we're looking at here is the distance between those two lines, which is the overhang. And this is the before here for the left lateral flexion. And then we compare it to that one over there uh, for the after. Uh, this is the after. And again, compare this to that. So the answer is here, we see good objective improvements. Uh, and uh, so that's good. That, that qualifies as even though this person didn't symptomatically improve, we saw improvements in their overhang. 
Now we have here uh, the second case. Again, we're looking at the distance between these two lines, comparing it to that, and we see a drop uh, or less overhang. And for this one down here, the before and after, there's no change, but uh, this one definitely did show improvement. So overall, there was improvement in instability for that patient. Uh, again, here, we're looking at the distance between those two lines. That's the overhang instability, comparing it to that one. So that shows an improvement. Uh, again, we're looking at the distance between these two lines and comparing it to this one, and that shows improvement. So this person uh, was improved on instability. Uh, again, on this one here, we have that distance between those two lines, and that all but goes away in the follow-up. And there wasn't really much overhang here to begin with, and there still isn't much overhang here after the procedure. So again, because of this one, uh, the patient substantially improved, despite not showing any symptomatic improvement. And in this one here, now this does look a little bit better here from here to here. As I looked at the numbers produced by the CATS office, it was only better by less than a millimeter. And I didn't classify this one as improved because of that, uh, because uh, I'd like to apply some strict criteria, meaning it has to be pretty obvious that there's a drop in the amount of overhang. And this one was never all that abnormal to begin with. So I'm gonna put this in the no change uh, category. And then finally, we have this one here, uh, really no change uh, in the distance between those two lines uh, from here to here. And there wasn't much instability down here to begin with. So I'm gonna put this one in the no change category. So uh, despite us being in a situation where the patient again didn't have symptomatic improvement after the first procedure, four of six image showed substantial improvement in uh, their craniocervical instability on DMX. So again, they had, you know, they didn't really have symptom improvement. Wish I could write faster here, but I can't. Um, but they did show uh, less instability on DMX. So pretty important idea there. We're, we're seeing that they're making improvements on DMX for the most part after that first procedure, despite not showing symptomatic improvement. So why would the majority show less instability and still have symptoms? The biggest reason is we probably haven't yet improved instability enough for symptoms to reduce. Conversely, it's also possible that, you know, the long-term instability has been there, meaning that enough time has passed that there's some more severe damage to areas that, that's either fixable or not fixable. Uh, so those are the two possibilities. You know, my overall sense would be in most patients, it's probably this one. So in conclusion, most patients in the case series showed improvement in, in instability despite no change in symptoms after the first PICL. So in conclusion, it may take two treatments in some patients for symptoms to begin to abate. So if you're in that situation where you've had a first PICL and you didn't really notice much change in symptoms, it seems to be important to get a second DMX to see if there's been improvement in instability, meaning that we're heading in the right direction and it probably makes sense to pull the trigger on a second procedure. So thanks so much for watching. Uh, hope you have a great day and uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks.